Uh, spring's been really good. Um, we've been doing a lot of hitting and things that, you know, will help us in the long run with, uh, you know, kind of being gritty and, and stuff like that. So it's it's been good uh, overall. Uh, how's it working with the new passing game coordinator, Coach Lewis? I um, mean, yeah, he's brought in to kind of handle the overall pass defense, and he's obviously coaches safeties, and Coach Green is still coaching cornerbacks. But how are you working with Coach um, Lewis, and uh, you feel like he's doing a good job? Yes, sir. Uh, definitely. Um, he's brought a lot, a lot of different knowledge um, through his experience, and it's only been helping us. Um, and we've gotten the safeties and corners working together a lot, and um, having like joint meetings and stuff like that. Uh, and it's really been helping us improve. I think that helps everyone get on the same page a little bit better. Exactly. Yes, it does. Uh, with communication and everything. Um, and yeah, so yeah, it, it, 100%. So while there have been a few coaching changes here and there, one, you know, is being reported. Go ahead. One one constant has been Coach Green. I think you've been working with him for your entire career. Is that right? Yes, sir. So is it kind of comforting knowing that you have the same coach? You know all of you know you, you relate to him. You've you've been working with him. Is that a comfort level for you all in the cornerback room? Uh, it definitely is, um, especially like being a like a young cornerback group. Um, like we've all been coached by Coach Green our whole time, I believe, and. Um, yeah, it's only done wonders for us uh, come this time as we, like, are taking control of the room. So, obviously, one of the issues last season was the deep passes, the getting the ball thrown over your head. How much of an emphasis has been placed on that this spring? There's been a lot of emphasis placed on that. Um, I think we've we've shown great improvement with it. I, I think that was uh, – a piece of that was also, like, experience – um, and now that we've all like been like thrown into the fire and like understand it's we're able to apply things like quickly and uh, react and, you know, be more instinctive. And um, yeah, so it's definitely improved us in the back end. Okay, I'll pass it along to someone else. Go ahead, Pete. And Vidi, when you have a, a coaching change like this, it can certainly go, you know, one way, or in this case, the fact that someone in house uh, ends up taking over the job makes the transition uh, smoothly for you all. Uh, has there really been uh, a transition at all, especially on your side uh, of the football uh, based on the fact that coach Newberry got the promotion uh, to head coach here? Uh, there's been, there's been some small changes, but nothing like really big. Like you said, it's, it was, from um, within so like you know everything for the most part is this the same and like you know st certain standards are raised and everything but other than that like it's we all like kind of know what to expect if that makes sense how tough is that position to play in college football really in any level uh, of football these days just because of the quality that you go up against seemingly every week on the other side of the ball uh it, it's tough and you know, nowadays, like you see a lot more, a lot of different uh, details and like receivers, like what they're doing, like how they're, how to beat the corner and everything. So, you know, with all those different like tangibles, like put into one, it, it's, it's been pretty tough, but you know, that's the part of the game, you know, the things are going to improve and, you know, uh, it only makes, it only makes me better. So. I was going to say, how much film study do you have to do individually on the receivers you play every week? Just looking for any kind of a tendency that may tip you off as to, you know, when he may run a slant as opposed to, you know, a stop and go or, or, or something like that. Just because of the, I mean, you guys see all kinds of different types of passing offenses with just within your own league. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I pretty, I pretty much watch film every day uh, leading up to a game. And um, it's, it's kind of like, you know, building a habit, you got to do, you got to do something small every day to really, you know, get that like ingrained in your brain, which is the same way with the receivers. Like as you watch film, like piece by piece, you'll start to pick up on certain things and, um, you know, certain, certain ways receivers like run certain routes, like their speed um, and, and things like that. So yeah, it, it's a everyday basis with film. 
I know coaches and, and everybody, you know, has advice. You got to have a short memory, especially when a, a play does go against you, because inevitably a, a play is going to go against you. I mean, that's just the nature of the sport. But how difficult is that short memory process uh, to come back and, and try to make the next play? Uh, because, you know, the next play could certainly, you know, help your team uh, in a big way as well. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's a huge deal. That's probably one of the biggest deals for a corner because, uh, you know, a lot of things happen. You know, it's a 60 minute game. So, you know, there, you know, there's a lot of plays and a lot of, you know, different things and momentum changes and stuff like that. And you can make a mistake. And what you really got to tell yourself is that the pass is the pass, like next play mentality, because it's right there. So, um, yeah, that's, that is probably the biggest thing as a corner to that you have to grasp is having a short memory. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Wags, back to you. Well, obviously, you and Elias were both sophomores, um, and you'll be rising. You know, you're going to be juniors. I mean, how, how much is the experience going to make a difference this season? I would think that, you know, it's going to look a lot different for you guys. You that, That's a lot of Yes, sir. Uh, it's going to make a huge difference. Um like I said earlier, like uh, knowing the plays and being able to apply it now, like very clearly um, and being comfortable with the system and knowing what the coaches are expecting um, and being able to rely on your like teammates because you know their jobs uh, a lot better. Uh, it, it all will help uh, come this year. And, um, you know, we, we only got, we have, all we have is time. So um, yeah, the, the experiences was definitely needed and, um, It'll, it'll definitely pay off big time. So there's a lot of other corners coming back. Uh, Willie Collins and uh, Matthew Peters, Duhart. Um, can you talk about the overall experience in the room? It's going to be dramatically different from last season. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, we got we got a young group, but, you know, most of us have seen, you know, the the feel of the game, um, played snaps and in the heat of moments and, so it's all it's it's a really good feeling knowing that you have like brothers that you know you can rely on to you know you know get the job done um, and bring their own uh, tangibles uh, to the game um, and yeah so that's that's big. Are there any guys that I haven't mentioned that maybe were not on the season in the depth chart last season that have shown some things in spring ball? Yes, sir. Uh, Cameron Love, he's also a rising senior. Um, he's he has a, he's a very gritty player. Um, you know, when you you might look at, you know, the size and think, oh, like, you know, he's a small like, corner, but he brings everything he has. And uh, he's definitely someone that, you know, I look up to when it comes to, you know, quote unquote, being underweight, but bringing it all because that that's the want in this game really makes a difference. So. Uh, that's another guy. And then, um, yeah, I think you pretty much mentioned everybody uh, for now. Well, I know that there's guys older than you, but you are, you know, the returning starter. And, you know, you've got to be a leader in that room. Do you feel like you have to show leadership? Definitely. Uh, the leadership comes from everybody in the room. Uh, it's, it's just holding each other accountable, uh, whether it's me to someone else or them to me. Uh, it doesn't matter how young or old you are. Um, you know, if you if you know there's something that somebody is slacking on, just, you know, tell them to pick it up and, and you know, correcting them. And uh, yeah, so, you know, the leadership within the group is a lot bigger uh, because we're the ones that's gonna be on the field at the end of the day. And um, and so that's that's why the closeness of our group really matters. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm just glad to be in the room with them. Another guy coming okay. back. Another guy we, we missed was De uh, Deshaun Peel. Deshaun Peel's another one coming back. It, he's out injured right now, but uh, Pete, can MB, can you talk about what Coach Green means? Um, it's a guy that certainly seems to be able to come down to that area where you're from and recruit uh, incredibly well. Just what is it about him and? Uh, a, the recruiting process, but more importantly, now that uh, he's in the room with you every day as that voice that you hear all the time. Yes, sir. Uh, it means a lot. Um, our relationship 
like on the personal level is great and that's how that's just who he is as a person he you know connects with us like connects with the players on a uh you know outside of football like level so just that just brings a lot of trust to us and we can trust him to guide us in the right direction and he can trust you know us on the field and things like that and you know things that affect us outside of the football field and uh yeah that's just that's just who he is and it's, and it's amazing how did you get involved in lacrosse in high school and do you get to come out to see much lacrosse during the spring here at the academy so lacrosse was just one of those like sports i just wanted to i just wanted to play i think there was just a lot of pool because my school was just like a pretty good lacrosse school and i was just like you know i want to add another sport and play it and so junior year came and i I jumped in and it really replicates my position, like the position I play in the cross, uh, defense and midi. So like, you know, you gotta be able to move your feet, open up your hips, just basically everything you had to do as a corner. So, um, you know, that, it, that was, it was just fun. And I, I learned it quick. And then uh, I try to get out to games It's hard, you know, we're, <laughs> we're getting asked a lot for football. So, you know, that it, it is hard, but um, it's great to like, like see the the cross guys because I'm pretty close to them as we all have classes together, and some of us went to naps together. Uh, so yeah, that connection is there, and it's, it's always cool. Any chance we could get you and X to go out there one day and do a little one on one just for a little side film action there, uh, <laughs> especially with you playing D MIDI like that? <laughs> that would actually that would actually be cool. <laughs> I don't know if our coaches will allow that. <laughs> awesome stuff, man. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you. RB, so far, I mean, you know, it's a it's a new message, but it's it's the same message. It's a familiar voice uh, for you all as, as coaches right now. What kind of adjustment, if any, has there been um, with the first difference in a spring voice for you in a long time, especially at the top of that staff? Um. It, it has brought a, a new energy uh, to the room. Um, at the the program itself, I think, was already had a great foundation. I mean, the, I think the culture was set. Uh, I think Coach New has has done an excellent job of building off what we already had and taking it to another notch. You know, with the new energy, uh, there's a newfound um, focus, uh, and so it's it's a joy to be around. It feels good. For you, as you continue this journey in coaching, did, did you ever see yourself in this role and, and certainly uh, thriving in it, enjoying it, and doing it at a place that I know uh, is very near and dear to your heart? Not at all. Um, I am one of the most blessed members of the Brotherhood. Um, I, I never you know, envisioned this. Um, I went from being one of the, the – the younger staff members in the room, you know, I played for all those guys, Nehemiah and Jasper and all those guys as a mid. And and now we got a, a, a new group in the, in the, and I'm now one of the older members. Uh, <laughs> and so my, my, my um, perspective for it, it, or, you know, where I sit now, as far as things go, I'm one of the older members of the staff now. Uh, they kind of look at me a little bit different, like the old man. I think I met one of the uh, the wives of one of the new staff members. They called me sir for the first time. And it's the first time I've heard that. Somebody called me sir. Uh, as an, another another adult called me sir. So um, so it's a it's a wonderful ride. It's been a wonderful ride for me here. Uh, I can't, I, I wake up every day, blessed man, and, and, and super happy to be uh, in a position I'm in. With your background, though, when you go into living rooms and, and meet with families and, and really truly tell them what this experience at the Naval Academy uh, can do, you know, for, for their son. Uh, when you look back on it now, how much does that help uh, in recruiting? Because football kind of sells itself, but the education and what it can do for you for your entire life uh, is really uh, the, the big thing that, that goes along with it here. Just the fact that you live that experience, how much does that help you deliver that message to those parents who are, are taking on not just a football commitment, but obviously a commitment for their young person. Um, that could be, you know, a, a career for a lifetime. 
Yeah. And so now that, that uh, I believe that I have found my purpose in life in, in this place um, and delivering the message from the Naval Academy, from my experience, uh, it is it is my recruiting pitch. It is it is it is I don't I just tell my own story and I don't have to deliver a, a, an actual recruiting pitch. Uh, and I think the parents uh, can appreciate that more than the kid. And I can relate to the kid in saying that. I know, I know you don't understand what all this means now, but trust me, uh, it will pay off for you in a lifetime of, of success uh, coming to this place. And I can just talk my own story uh, without having to even think about it. And it comes, it's very genuine. Um, I love what I do here. I think it comes out in, in my message to these, to these families and these kids. And I think because it is genuine, uh, it, it, it allows us to be super successful in recruiting this place. And uh, Coach Newberry uh, allows me the latitude to talk to you know, the entirety of, of our recruiting class sometimes um, in that message. Let's talk about your, your room for a minute. Obviously, you've got players that uh, have some experience. Uh, some of them, you know, got baptism by fire uh, pretty quickly uh, against the incredible competition you all face uh, year in and year out, week after week. Um, eventually, you're going to add Peel back into that group. Uh, as well in the brief time he was out there he showed you some things just thoughts on where your room is uh, progressing through spring uh, right now and obviously you've got some players that are going to try and compete here for a lot of playing time absolutely I think uh, since I've been here we're probably the deepest as far as depth goes uh, of any time I've been here in the cornerback room Uh, we have you know we have having four guys who've played cornerback snaps in a game uh, live action, uh, and we have a have a fifth that played, you know, special team snap. So I have five guys who've got playing time, and I think, um, you know, knock on wood, we stay healthy. Uh, this this may end up being uh, one of our our strengths for our defense uh, when you look at what we have to offer. Um, just dynamic group of athletes, and this spring they have really turned the corner, um, and it's showing us some legitimate. Uh, D1 American Athletic Conference DB play, which has been really exciting to see these guys run around and play fast. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks. So, uh, RB, can you talk a little bit about the development of these corners? I mean, you had a very young group last year. The starters, and BD and Elias, were both sophomores. Um, their backups were juniors. One, you know, Duhart was a, a plebe. Um, can you talk about the growth that's going on here during spring ball? Yes, sir. So I, I, I've one, they were tremendously athletic kids to start. Uh, and I thought they were tremendous athletes. Um, and now that, uh, as Pete said, got some baptism by fire, uh, I think mentally now they've, they've grown in leaps and bounds as far as that development goes. And so the game has slowed down for them and it has allowed them to play faster uh, and with more aggression um, a more purposeful movement than, than they had last year. And so, um, you know, and BD and Elias, they, they, they're, they're using their smarts now. They, they're, they're playing with their minds before they play with their feet. Uh, and I think it shows that it has showed up all spring, which I'm super excited about. Um, and and all, all Matt Peters need, needed was some confidence. And I think, you know, playing live snaps in the, in the Army game, playing live snaps against UCF, has given them that confidence. And now he uses 6-3 frame uh, to now make plays. And he's, he's shown a, 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 some growth and development, probably more so than anybody else in the room. Uh, and now he's playing at a high level. So, uh, you know, as far as development goes, I think these guys are getting to the point where they can, they can actually um, cut loose and they don't have to worry about thinking so much and make some plays. Is there anybody that's really, you know, you mentioned Peters, anyone else that's really stood out so far this spring? Yeah, my, you know, high expectations for Embiid and Elias, of course, because they you know, had, you know, the most snaps of anybody in the room. Uh, so they perform, you know, up to standard and, and, and beyond. Uh, the biggest two surprises would be uh, Andrew Duhart, uh, who, who he, he grew in leaps and bounds as far as his strength and his, his physical development is gone. You know, squatting nearly 400 pounds and you know, bitching nearly you know, 300 pounds, um, running his fastest times he's ever run here. He's in great shape. And now his athleticism is taking over. 
Uh, he's probably been the biggest surprise uh, of the spring so far. Uh, and uh, Matt Peters, who, who again was an incredible athlete to start, uh, he just needed the confidence at the position. And now he's turn, turning it loose. Uh, and so he's, he's probably the second guy uh, as far as development goes, who's you know, as far as the prizes go um, for the spring. So uh, Navy has a new passing game coordinator and Coach Lewis. How are you two working together? It has been uh, one of the, the, the joys of, of this profession uh, in meeting and getting to work with somebody like Coach Lewis. Uh, this man has you know, over 20 years of coaching experience at, at, at both the uh, D1 and NFL levels. Um, he is an awesome advocate for, for our deep defensive backs. Um, and it, it's a joy to have him to work with. We are now co-coaching uh, the DBs together. Uh, and so we are together about 50% of the time in the same meeting room, uh, coaching coaching both I mean, all four DBs. And so I think the entirety of the group uh, is learning more about the defensive back position because we're now working all together and, and, and me having uh, a coach with, with Coach Lewis experience know how and he's actually played the position at a very high level uh was a cornerback in college has helped us tremendously uh in the defensive back room it, it, it's just benefited from him coming here and coach lewis indicated and mbd just uh, reiterated that uh you all are working together more having more joint meetings uh kind of tell me your thoughts on that and do you feel it's um been you know a beneficial absolutely like i said we're co-coaching now we have a shared custody of all DBs. Uh, and so um, what I hear him say in our meeting, uh, I can go out and I can, 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 can coach the safeties as well as he's coaching the cornerbacks and there's no egos between either one of us. Um, it's a, like I said, it's a, it's, a, it's a joy to have a coach like him around. Um, I'm learning so much more about the, the position uh, of all, all DBs uh, and I think together, um, you know, he leans on me a little bit for the for them having been here for a long time and understanding the culture here, uh, and I'm leaning him on him a lot for his knowledge uh, of the position. Uh, it has been it, it is, I've grown leaps and bounds in my personal knowledge since he's since he's come on campus. So obviously, one of the issues last year was the deep ball and having teams beat you deep and get the long touchdowns um, or big gains. Are you working? Has that been a point of emphasis this spring, Coach? Uh, absolutely. Um, it's always an emphasis of us, limit X plays, uh, and those, those passing plays over 25 yards. Um, and, and, and our defense is, is designed to do that. Uh, we, we took a very hard look at ourselves and we're very honest with ourselves uh, in the winter, you know, after the season, postseason, uh, to fix some of those issues. Um, and that's going to be always our focus. Um, but I think we made such improvements. He's since Coach Lewis has come in and tweaked some things on the back end, as a as a as a as a former coordinator himself, um, understanding that he gave us just a few bits of knowledge um, about how to make things easier on ourselves, and those and those changes uh, have benefited us greatly. Thanks, Coach. Back to you, Pete. RB, just to expand on that. Uh, togetherness uh, for a minute here. We talk about the finite details. Every play can be successful if all the finite details are realized, both offensively and defensively. The fact that those conversations now are in the same room, uh, does that, in theory, uh, you hope, promote uh, the continuity that leads to better communication on the field between corners, safeties, to make sure that those finite details are realized, which could be difference makers in a game? Absolutely. Uh, and I would throw Coach Volker in, in the mix as well. He's had more defensive unit meetings than we've had in the past, which allows the back end to understand what the underneath players are, are doing as well. So we meet together you know, for 15 minutes as a defensive unit, and then we break up, and then we meet together as a defensive backs unit. And and it just it's we say this all the time, but it, communication is everything, all right. And 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 hearing one little nugget that you didn't get last year, one little fine minute detail that you missed last year, there was something missed in translation between the two rooms is now going away. Uh, and we've made, made us that much better 
on those fine, fine details that you mentioned uh, uh, between between the back end. So uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, it's a hearing uh, the fact that our players see Coach Lewis and I discussing stuff in front of them also opens them up to discuss things between themselves, all right? Encourages them to do the same, understand that we don't have all the answers by ourselves, and that I'm searching answers from Coach Lewis and vice versa, and that now their communication has gotten better because ours has been an example to them. That makes sense. For guys like you and Eric, from the time you were on the field yourselves to the types of passing games uh, we're seeing now, just how different and, and how complex are some of these passing schemes uh, that we're seeing now where you all are obviously trying to help these defensive backs be as, as good as they can against the greatest athletes we've ever seen. And I think seven on seven RB has made the wide receivers and potentially the DBs also because they participate. I think you're getting a better version of those players in wide receiver and DB when they arrive to you because of seven on seven. How much have you seen that and, and seen that help the growth of both wide receivers and corners now when they arrive? Absolutely. So these guys uh, are, are getting year-round, you know, pass scale coverage, uh, you know, throughout their, their younger years. The development of the quarterback position on 7-on-7 seven seven is also, uh, we're seeing all that. And so we're, we're getting all that in conference. Uh, the defensive back position has gotten tremendously harder than it used to be. Uh, it, it is such a difficult position to play that uh, the year-round practice at it has, has, has made us a lot better, right? Uh, but the, the, the throwing the quarterback in the mix as well, who's making much faster decisions, throwing in much tighter windows, uh, while, while, while understanding that the run game, all our run fits fit off all that play action pass, RPO game, and all that in the mix uh, is becoming an incredibly uh, difficult position to play. Uh, but our guys um, you know, have, have benefited greatly from, from the increased level of uh, pass skill and our, you know, our offense looks gives us uh, and playing against some of the top talent in the country. Um, that would, can be surprising for a lot of guys to start. Um, but luckily for us, we have, we've got some experience now in conference and now guys, the game has kind of slowed down for those guys. So, um, yes, yeah, so we, we, the, the skill position in football now is, 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 it's out of control. Uh, and, and in this conference, as you, you, you have witnessed, uh, we get to face the best. You mentioned earlier, uh, you know, Andrew Duhart making uh, the, the things, the detailed work physically to make himself better, to make himself a better player. Talking about uh, his record squats and his benching and doing those types of things in an era where it's real simple for a easily put his name into the portal and leave if he's not playing, as opposed to doing what, Andrew uh, did to go make himself uh, physically better. And for guys like Matt Peters, who certainly have physical stature, but, you know, work hard to do the things necessary to get on the field a little bit more, seeing guys that are willing to do that as opposed to take the easy way out. Um, for, for those guys in particular, you know, how does it feel as a coach to see guys do that as opposed to take the easy way out and just put their name in the portal and try to go somewhere else? I think that that makes Navy special and the fact that we are still a developmental program and not just talking about physical development, but talking about mental development. And we always, I like to think that we have uh, more men on our team, right, than, than a lot of guys that we face uh, who don't quite understand yet at their, at their young ages of you know, 19, 19 to 23 or whatever, uh, the fact that, that, that life is hard and that you must work through things. It's not like life gets easier as you get older. You just handle, you know, harder things better. Um, that these guys get those less lessons really early in their lives, uh, and we've benefited from that here. Uh, the, the, you know, Naps does a great job of, 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 of you know, taking our kids through the fire uh, before they get here. Adds an extra level layer of of development for us, um, and we can say truly that the brotherhood here the development of these young men, that they can see their futures in a very, very bright way, uh, that that keeps them grounded. Uh, and under, they understand really early that it's, hard work is the only way. Um, and so uh, I, it, it feels wonderful to be around these young people. Again, we, we, we develop not only physically, but mentally, uh, spiritually, and all those types of things. But th these guys come out of here as, as men who are going to have a very important job to do. 
I think they have a have a vision of what their future lives will look like at post graduation that makes them um, work and grind so they were ready for those those moments. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Wags. So, Coach, obviously this has been a, a year of upheaval for Navy football with a lot of changes. Um, you know, what's it like for you, a guy who played in the program and was here, uh, you know, under Coach Nia Matalola for a long time? Has this been an interesting transition? Well, you know, I, I have abs I absolutely love Coach Neil Matalolo and, and and the staff and all those guys who are here. Uh, he gave me a shot uh, at being a coach when they didn't have to. Um, and so Coach Neil Matalolo is one of the most um, you know, revered members, uh, you know, of the staff or been a part of his family. Uh, and I think we all have the respect for him, including Coach Newberry, uh, for what he did here. Uh, and so it was, uh, it's like a, you know, like the, your head of your family stepped down, but then the guy who took his place was, was a, was an uncle or a brother or, um, somebody who was close to the program who, who, um, has respect for him and what he did here. Um, and so, yeah, initially it was, it was, it's heartbreaking. It was a heartbreaking trans transition. Uh, so I had. You know, one, uh, I guess a bit of heartbreaking sadness when Coach Nimot left, but I also had at the same time um, wanting the best for Coach Newberry and wanted him to be uh, this thing to go well and wanted to work very hard so to make sure he was going to be successful. Uh, and I was very, very happy uh, that it was him uh, who, who, who the program was, was transitioned over to. Um, because I know him, I got to work side by side with him, and I was super happy for that. Uh, and then the guys he brought in are such good people and good coaches um, that it was it was difficult to be sad for long uh, because uh, I wanted the best for them, and, the, and they're coming here with the opportunity, and I, and I didn't want to drag that out at all. And I want to be make sure I was a part of their success as well, and so. Um, no love lost with Coach Nimai at all, uh, but lots of appreciation and lots of, of want, wanting um, for Coach Newberry to be super successful. So it's obviously interesting for so long, Navy was led by offensive minded folks. Um, Coach Johnson was an offensive guy. Coach Nehemiah, even before them, Charlie Weatherby came from an offensive background, was a quarterback. Is it interesting to have the head coach be a defensive guy? Um, and I'm the total transparency here. I was more than happy to, 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 to have my head coach be, uh, you know, my former boss, defensive coordinator. Um, it, it, it just, it just, uh, I don't, I don't, I've never been on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, so I can't, I can't talk to those things, but it sure does feel, have a level layer of comfort <laughs> that he understands, uh, what we go through here on the defensive side of the ball and has a, an appreciation at least. Um, for for what we decided to do here, um, and so yeah, it's it's all been awesome. I mean, we speak the same language. Um, I see him. I see my head coach more often than I used to, um, uh, but just because he's a, he's a defensive guy as well. Uh, and and I'm very, you know, what I'm excited about is he gets to now use his defensive mind to help our offense out um, and to help them benefit because he understands you know, what offenses attempt to do to, to defenses. Um, I really look really excited about, you know, what he brings to the offensive side now, being a defensive guy and understanding how they can use his knowledge to their advantage. And then along with that transition, obviously now you have a new voice on the defensive side of the ball and Coach Volker and he and Coach Newberry, um, although, uh, you know, similar philosophies are different people. Uh, PJ's a little more outgoing, energetic guy. Uh, you know, how's it been working with PJ? Oh, PJ is awesome. So PJ and I, uh, you know, he, his office is right next to mine, you know, since he got here. And so we, we talk often. Uh, he's a good man. He is, uh, he is super organized. Uh, and so I, we are benefiting greatly from that. Um, Coach Newberry, it was his defense. And so he understood it at the back of his hand. Uh, PJ has taken that and build upon it and put his own twist on it. 
And I think um, they're not, I'm not trying to take anything with Coach Newton, but Coach, but PJ has brought a level of organization, um, creativity in the room. Uh, our voice is a little bit louder. Uh, and because we're, we're trying to develop the entirety of the defense, our voice is a little bit louder. And so um, he is going to be a wonderful defensive coordinator. Um, and we always have Coach Newberry around to bounce ideas off of. He, he's a genius. Uh, we talk about defensive football, and so uh, yeah, it, it it is. We've gotten we've gotten better. We got stronger. I, I really do believe that as a defense.